بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى يتسن جناب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم as a mercy to mankind his actions, his words, everything is a mercy for us the solution to all our problems in dunya and akhirat lies only in following what Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam has taught us Amongst those things, which is number one, to show the authenticity of Nubuat, the signs of Qiyamah, Alamat al there were signs that has just happened previously, signs that we are witnessing today, possibly minor signs, and then the major signs that are to come. As to the exact date, nobody knows exactly, but these are signs, lessons for us, and is an ibrah. Because in San due to our weakness, although Sahaba said, Law kushifatil qita, mazdat to imana, that even if Jannat and Jahannam were opened up to us, it wouldn't affect us. But as time goes by, due the weakness of iman, we needed signs and lessons. So the exact date is not known, but preparation is needed. And a person shouldn't delve too much into it so that they lose focus of exactly why we have been sent and what we should be doing. Because it's also another plot of shaitan. To get too much into it that it takes away from uh, us from our ibadat and our objective. That's also not matlub and uh, objective as well. And Isabi came and Nabi Ali asked him, but what have you prepared for Qiyamah? You want to know when Qiyamah is, but what preparation have you made? And he encouraged Sahaba, Badiru bil amali sab'an, rush towards seven things before seven things happen. Hal tantadiruna illa faqran munsiyan? Are you waiting for poverty that you'll forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the end of the riwayat? Awid dajalu fasharru ghaibin yuntadar? And if you're waiting for dajal, then that's something not to wait for. Meaning, information is at its place, it's at your disposal, but preparation is needed immediately. It shouldn't be like there was an announcement of an impending tsunami and a person was busy, busy painting his house and the uh, officials came to warn him that by this time you need to vacate. So he was busy painting his house, busy painting his house. He said, now nah, I need to finish my painting. So they said, but it's something more worse. You're not going to love, your house won't even survive. Forget the paint. He said, no, but I got a job to do. So sometimes it should not be that Quran and Hadith is in front of us, but we, we lose our focus, we lose our objective, we lose our momentum. So there are different riwayat. Firstly, uh, the riwayat of things that had happened in the past, and generally what Nabi Islam had mentioned, like uh, the closeness of the marketplaces. So the places of the markets will become closer. In today's times, we can understand it, where the cities expand and it becomes close to each other, or time passing quickly. For example, today, in today's times, we can understand it, where time passes quickly, how? Through air travel, through road travel, etc., rail travel. So the signs of the past, which has happened, and we'll just list a few. For it through an kahatain, the coming of Qiyamat and uh, Myself is like this, and he joined his two fingers. So ulama have given different interpretations, whether it's just so close, or they've actually calculated the years and approximate time from the beginning of Adam alayhi salam till Nabi alayhi salatu salam, and how much time was left. And that's from another riwayat, from Fajr to Dhuhr, and Dhuhr to Asr. So you calculate time-wise from Adam alayhi salam till uh, Nabi alayhi salatu salam, and in Asr to Maghrib, which is half the time, different times have been given into that as well, but this is not the place to go into that. Then Nabi Alaihi departure from this world, then while he was alive, the splitting of the moon, and then after that, the departure of the companions and the fitnas to come after that. And then uh, in time, many incidents in history had happened, the conquest of uh, Jerusalem, uh, that happened in the 16 year after Hijri, the time of Zid Umar bin Khattab and then 583 uh, Hijri, uh, Salahuddin al-Ayyubi, Rahmatullah alayhi conquered it again. 
So likewise, different incidents in history, which we will not get into details now. But what's more important is currently now, what signs are we witnessing? Thumma Mautan. One interesting narration is that there will be deaths. يَأْخُذُكُمْ كَقَفَاسِ الْغَنَمِ So there's a sickness, there's a plague, there's an epidemic which used to take animals, we should, we should grab the entire populace. No animal would survive at that time. So widespread prey, plague would come and the, the commentary on that is And it was a sickness that would take people uh, in the chest. A sickness that will take people in the chest. In the past there were other plagues, very famous, the plague of Amwas which was in around the 18th year of Hijri, approximately 25,000 Muslims, Sahaba included, became Shaheed, great, great Sahaba, Mu'ad bin Jabal, Abu Baida bin Jarrah, Shurahbil bin Hassana, Fadl ibn Abbas, etc. Great, great Sahaba became Shaheed at that time. So not necessarily a certain occasion that certain riwayat is confined to that. There's one riwayat. So we have riwayat where it is general. Hallat bihimul adab. When the ummah does these things, yeah. Hallat bihimul bala. Then they make bala and calamity. They basically sign a death warrant. They authorize Allah's adab. They authorize Allah's adab. Ida faalat ummati khamsa ashra khaslatan. Some riwayat five, some ten, some fifteen, some seventy-two, etc. We'll just run through all of these riwayat. But what's important in this riwayat is two things. One is, it is a sign of Qiyamah. And if I'm doing this, then I am a sign of Qiyamah. Who every Nabi came and he warned his nation. If I'm part of any of these, then I am a sign of Qiyamah, which is quite serious. And secondly is, that if I'm doing any of these things, then I am a cause for Allah's adab to come. So, تَذْهَرْ فَعِيشَ فِي قَوْمٍ قَدْ تُحَتَّى يُعْلِنُ بِهَا إِلَّا فَشَاءَ الطَّعُونَ وَالْأَوْجَاءَ That when the ummah loses their modesty, بِحَيَائِ For now, I'm just going to run through some points. Inshallah, we'll try to limit the next few days, Mubarak month of Ramadan. Ideally, we want to make mudakara on that as well. But just as a reminder for myself first, we need to be checking ourselves all the time. So when the ummah will lose their modesty, then plagues and sicknesses will come in the ummah. Such sicknesses لم تكن مضت في أسلافهم الذين مضوا That in history, it was never seen and never witnessed. Now we can console ourselves and maybe say it was designed and developed in a lab and it's a conspiracy and it's this and it's that. But everything is a creation of Allah and, and everything is through the ijazat and permission of Allah. But we need to look at the asbab, the cause, because the believers are also being inflicted with this. And secondly, when the ummah will not fulfill and weigh things properly, إِلَّا وَجَوْرِ السُلْطَانِ That they will have droughts, they will have oppressive rulers. So not, not weighing scales is not necessarily like in the olden days, but it's detail of that. لَمْ يَمْنَعُوا الزَّكَاةِ أَمْوَالِهِمْ إِلَّا مَنَعُوا الْقَتْرِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ By not paying zakah, we deprived of rain from the heavens. وَلَمْ يَنْقَضُوا أَهْدَ اللَّهِ وَأَهْدَ رَسُولِهِ إِلَّا صَلَّتَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ أَدُوًا That when this Ummah does not obey Allah and His Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put upon them an enemy فَأَخَذُوا بَعْدَ مَا فِي أَيْدِيهِمْ And they will wipe them out. That's because of them not fulfilling and not complying with the awamir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, When you see these signs, when the ummah are perpetrating these things, One riwayat mentions clearly, 
the red wind. So those days, maybe it was difficult to understand, but in today's times, the viruses, the color, they've made it red also. Whether it wasn't red or not, doesn't matter. The point is Ria and Hamra, such a wind that plague and sicknesses will spread. And the commentators explain, Yamurru alayhim hawa, that such a wind, such a plague will come, kulluhu sumum, that it'll be poisonous, it'll be detrimental, wa amrad, and different, different types of sicknesses, wa gharat jawiyah, kulluha afat. Such an extent, the devastation will be that it will wipe out. It will wipe out. Now, wiping out, in the olden days, they said, half one nasl, crops and plantations. But in today's times, we can say it will wipe out economies, it will wipe out governments, it will wipe out people's businesses, it will wipe out. So, physically and economically, it will wipe out. Then more, khasfan, maskhan, details inshallah, if Allah gives tawfiq, we'll get into that. Wa ayatin tataba'am. But Nabi alayhi is saying, these are just a few things. But to understand it, it's not just one situation that will occur, not just one incident isolated, but multiple. Ka nidhamin balin kutia silkuhu fatataba'am. Like how you have a necklace and the strain of that necklace breaks and one by one it falls in succession like that. This will come. فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِرِيهٍ حَمْرًا So let them prepare for this, these calamities to occur, occur rapidly. Now, whether that first or not, I, I, I need to make a call. And I need to turn to Allah because we've been told, number one, this is a sign of Qiyamah. Number two, you are a sign of Qiyamah. Number three, this is going to happen. And number four, it is because of not obeying the awamir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's one interesting narration. It's called the narration of Jassasa, where once Nabi alayhi salam called everybody to the masjid and uh, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha, who is the narrator of this narration, says that Nabi alayhi salatu was salam made alan, we went to the masjid, we all read salah, and uh, this is Fatima bint Qais radiallahu anha, we all read salah, and after that, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam saying, that all of you should remain in your places. He was sitting on the member, وَهُوَ يَضْحَكُ And he was smiling, and he said, أَتَدْرُونَ لِمَا جَمَعَتُكُمْ Do you know why I've called you? Today I've called you, not for extortion or warning. وَلَكِنْ جَمَعَتُكُمْ لِأَنَّ تَمِيمًا دَارِيَّ كَانَ رَجُلًا And he said that Tamim Dari was a person, a non-Muslim, he accepted Islam, and I'm going to tell you about something which he had witnessed about Dajjal, which I've been telling you. They were at sea, they got lost at sea, there were approximately 30 of them. And they took a small boat and they got to an island. Hatta Maghrib al-Shams. As they were on that boat, they disembark and they entered that island. Falaqiyadhum dabbatun. And an a, a, a animal, a type of a creature met them, Kathiru Shah, which was overwhelmed with so much hair, they could not differentiate between the front and the back. So they said, Wai Laki Ma Anti, what are you? So she replied, Anal Jassasa. I want, I am the one who gives information about the Jal. I seek information for the Jal. So we asked Wamal Jassasa, what is this Jassasa? So she said, if you want to know, go to the monastery. There is somebody there that will give you more information. She said, we became afraid. We don't know if it was a shaitan, a jinn. So we went to the monastery, we entered, 
and there was a creature, man, we've never seen anybody more bigger in size than him. He was bound strongly in chains, hands tied to the neck, leg bounds, uh, bound in iron uh, shackles. And as we were going, we, 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 we noticed this jassasa. So we said, Ma Anta, what are you? So he said, you have come, you will come to know about me. You will soon come to know about me. He said, who are you? So we narrated our story. We narrated our incident to him about us being lost at sea. And we came here. Then he said, okay, tell me about the date palm trees of Baisan. We told him about it. He said, one day there will be no trees there. He said, then tell me about the lake of Tabaria. Then he asked, is it full? He said, one day it will dry up. Then tell me the spring of Zuhar. Then they asked, what do you want to know about it? He said, well, uh, do people grow crops and water? They said, yes, plenty of water and people grow crops. Then he said, tell me about uh, the unlettered Nabi. What has he done? And he said, he left Makkah. He settled in Medina. Do the Arabs fight against him? He said, yes. How do they deal with that? He said, they replied that uh, he has prevailed over the Arabs and they have obeyed the Nabi of Allah. He said, has this happened? He said, yes. So he said, if he has appeared, I am advising you to tell them to follow him and listen to me. Inni anal masihu, I am Dajjal. I am Dajjal. Soon permission will be given for me to emerge. I will come out, I will travel in land, I will not spare any town, and I will stay for 40 nights except Mecca and Medina. They are forbidden for me. I will be met in, with an angel and they will stop me, etc. Then when Nabi Islam finished the story, he said, he struck his staff on the member and said, this is Taiba, this is Taiba, this is Taiba, this is Medina. Did I not, did I not tell you about Medina Munawara? And uh, this story which Tamim is telling you is in conformance to what I've told you about Mecca and Medina. And he is in Syria, the Mediterranean Sea, or the Yemeni Sea, which is the Arabian Sea. Then he said, no, rather he is in the East. He is in the East. And then Nabi alayhi salatu salam pointed in that direction. So this is a great lesson in Ibarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the fitness of Dajjal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us afiyat. The amal for today is that when we go to sleep, man awa ila firashi ta'iran yadhkuru Allah hatta yudraku nu'as. And a person is in wudu. Let us make an habit. The whole day we are in wudu, we did previously, and now to sleep at wudu. But every turn that he makes, illa ata'u Allahu khayra dunya wal akhirah. Whatever he asks of the best of dunya and akhirah, Allah will give it to him. Another riwayat that a farishta is appointed by for him. Every movement that he makes, it will make dua for him. Allah ma'fil li abdika fa'inna hu ba'ta ta'hiran. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him. The dua for today. And again, these duas are short, simple, doesn't take a lot of time. To read in the morning and evening. Allahumma ma asbaha bi min ni'matin aw bi ahadim min khalqik. فَمِنْكَ وَحْدَكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ فَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ وَلَكَ الشُّكُرُ فَقَدْ أَدَّى شُكْرَ يَوْمِهِ Whoever reads this dua, yeah, if it's in the morning, ma asbaha, in the evening, ma amsa, then he is fulfilled the requirement of making shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if we had to do amal our whole life to show the shukr to Allah, that's in its place. But Nabi alayhi salam is saying, do what Allah has told, in, told you to you. And whatever deficiencies there is, if you read this dua, فَقَدْ أَدَّى شُكْرَ يَوْمِهِ You have fulfilled the gratitude demanded by Allah. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ